So I'm out in the woods today. I just had a wonderful lunch, and now it's time for coffee. But not just any coffee. This is going to be a special coffee. This time I'm making a Mexican mocha latte, bushcraft style. If you're interested in learning what that is, keep watching. Okay, so just what is a Mexican mocha latte, and how am I going to make this bushcraft style? Well, to begin with, I guess the ingredients will describe or explain what a Mexican mocha latte is. To start with, it is coffee, and uh, the quality of the coffee does make a difference in this recipe. So, of course, I'm going to be using the Rampage coffee, as you have seen me use many times before. And, of course, I do have a video on specifically on the Rampage coffee, which I'll put a link up here in the corner and of course at the end of the video if you're interested in seeing that but the other ingredient what makes it a Mexican mocha latte is Mexican hot chocolate and this is the Abuelita brand hot chocolate and I'll show you this when I take it out of the package in a minute but there, as far as I know there are two brands there may be more of Mexican hot chocolate Abuelita and Ibera. Uh, Abuelita, by the way, if you're interested, and I'm, I, uh, I, if somebody wants to correct me, but Abuelita means, in Mexican, little grandmother. So, take a close look at the picture and you'll understand what I'm saying. All right. So, this is a Nestle, Swiss Nestle-owned company, but not originally. Originally, it was a Mexican company that uh, Nestle bought out and still produces the, ch the hot chocolate in the original way. And I was introduced to this about a year and a half ago by my son and his wife. They had returned from a vacation in Mexico and they had done some off-grid or you know more authentic type of uh, touristy things and one of the things they were introduced to was hot chocolate, the official traditional Mexican way of doing it and they absolutely loved it and they gave me some at home. Now this is not what was used to make it from scratch but this is what you can purchase to make a pretty close I wouldn't say imitation, but a pretty close, much easier, more convenient version of Mexican hot chocolate. Basically, well, I'll show it to you in a minute when I take it open, as I said. You really, all you have to do is melt a portion of this in milk, and uh, you have a Mexican hot chocolate. However, having said that, uh, there is a special device, or a device, at least, that the Mexican people use to make the hot chocolate, and it's a stir stick. Of a, of a type, it's called a molinino, and I'll put a picture somewhere here on the screen of what a molinino looks like. And the way the molinino is used is basically in a tall sided pot with the milk warming and the chocolate melting. They just roll it between their fingers or their hands, palms back and forth, and as it spins in the pot, you can see on the device in the picture, uh, some of the rings are carved so that they're loose. That adds to the motion, the stirring action inside of the pot, and some to a degree, a certain amount of frothing. So you need two things, well, I guess you need three ingredients. The third ingredient for me out here today is going to be skim milk powder. Uh, skim milk powder you is going to you know it's not the richest thing you if you're doing this at home by all means use whole milk or whole milk and cream or whatever combination the richer that you milk you use that you know the better it's going to taste but out here in the woods i can bring the dry skim milk powder mix it with the cold water and it's still pretty good now let me tell you so once again it's the coffee the hot chocolate and the milk powder that's all there is that's all there is to the ingredients but what makes this bushcraft style well, the fact, I guess, that uh, I'm out in the woods while I'm doing it, that adds to it. I'm going to be doing it over a fire. Uh, but one more thing, and I don't have a Molinino, but I do have a Norwegian Var, or Tavar. And if someone would like to help me with the correct pronunciation, this is a very traditional, very old school device for stirring, like a whisk. It can be stirred put into a pot and used to stir up, well, just about anything, I guess. It is a simple, simple thing to make. And if you probably guessed it, this is the top off of a fir tree. So the very top section of the fir tree where the four little branches came out, sometimes you're lucky, you'll get five, and uh, just left a little bit of the stem on. Of course, you peel all the bark off, let it dry out. And this is the stir stick that I'm going to be using for making my Mexican mocha latte. So, all right, let's get down to the ground and start putting this together. Okay, if you haven't guessed already, it's cold out today. Very cold, in fact. Running around minus six degrees Celsius. Now, that's not what's cold, but we're 30 to 35 kilometer winds, and someone could probably calculate this out, but I believe it's somewhere around 15 to 18, minus 15 to 18 degrees Celsius wind chill. So, yeah, even with these fingerless gloves on, 
I'm finding it a bit chilly, so I'll be happy to get this hot chocolate made and into me. All right, just before I open up the Abuelita hot chocolate, I want to show you an alternative uh, because this does involve a bit of work. It's worth it. Trust me, it is worth it, but it does involve a bit of work. So let me show you an alternative. And I've been doing this for years. And that is simply a package of hot cocoa, like the Lando Lakes, and a package of instant coffee. In this case, the Via, what's this, French Italian roast. So, yeah, you know, I've done that for years when I wanted something hot. I wanted some coffee. I wanted it quick. I wanted it now. And, uh, you know, delicious combination. Good hot chocolate. Oh, by the way, uh, I didn't know the difference between hot cocoa and hot chocolate until recently. And I started looking. Uh, we just tend to call everything hot chocolate here. But there is a difference. Now, for the, for, uh, you know, in reality, most people can use the terms interchangeably because it's really not a lot of difference. But these packages which I've always called hot chocolate, are in fact cocoa. And the difference being is these packages are made with cocoa powder, not chocolate. Now, yes, chocolate is made from cocoa. You're right. So, uh, but when you're making hot cocoa, you're usually using cocoa powder. Now, you could do it from scratch, but when you get these packages like this, it's cocoa powder that's in them. Hot chocolate is made from, you guessed it, chocolate. Not from cocoa powder, but from chocolate itself. So that's why today this is the hot chocolate, because this is chocolate with Mexican spices in it, and that's what makes it a hot chocolate. I know, it, it, you know, what's the difference, really? Not a lot, because they both taste good any way you look at it. So that's all I really wanted to say there. Okay, let's get this opened up with my cold fingers. As I said, well, let's start with a knife because my cold fingers are just not doing the job. So these Abuelita chocolate bars come in a puck shape and you can see that they're segmented into four pieces. So each one of those pieces of chocolate, it makes one eight ounce cup of chocolate. So you would cut this, you know, either add this to four cups of milk or break it into quarters or whatever you want to make one cup per quarter of it. And of course, I'm, I'm only going to be making one. So just a little word on how this is, or the, the ratios or the ingredients, if you will. There we go. Broke that apart, put that aside. So I have one quarter here. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is making six to eight ounces of Ch uh, milk and which I'll melt the chocolate in and then I'm going to make four to six ounces of strong coffee so I brought a little mocha pot so I could use that to make the strong coffee with but uh, we have to get this going so as you can see this is hard quite crisp I'm losing some right on top of my bowl so I got to capture that and do you have to do what I'm going to do? No, you don't have to, but it's going to make your life a lot easier. And that is grate this up. Grate it into a fine, as fine a powder as you can reasonably get it. If I, if I, when I've done it at home, I just use a grater and just you know, run it up and down the grater. Being careful, of course, not to add anything that uh, doesn't belong in there. But today, I'm going to use a Swiss Army knife and the saw on the Swiss Army knife to grate the chocolate into my bowl, which I'll eventually transfer into my pot. And it's, this is easy. Hopefully you can see how easy that's just coming off. But I did say it takes a bit of work, so yeah, I'm gonna take a few minutes to get this all ground off with the saw. What I'll do is once I've got that in the bowl, all ground up like that, I'll bring it back and go on to the next step. Okay, I uh, did the best I could anyway. It's not perfect, but uh, you can see I've ground the chocolate quarter into this bowl. Uh, there are some bigger pieces in there. I was just getting too hard to hold on and saw at the same time. Um, it's not important that it all goes to powder, but it's a lot easier. If you can get it to a powder, it, it melts nicer and quicker into the milk and the, as the water warms up. Uh, I'm going to do just things a little different today. I have four tablespoons of skim milk powder in this little container, and I'm just going to add that directly to the chocolate right now. Uh, not necessary, which way you do this because in my little pot right here my little camel bowl 1.2 liter pot i have one cup of cold water and uh, i have one cup i'd prefer to do this with about six ounces of water because uh, you are going to be adding coffee to it which would might 
you know, change the ratios, but uh, four tablespoons of milk powder gives you one cup of skim milk. So uh, let me just put those in together. And of course you mix this into the cold water because uh, skim milk powder doesn't like being mixed into hot water. I'll use my var just to kind of mix it up a little bit. And, all right, so I've got milk and I uh, do be a little careful. All right, that's mixed enough that now I'm going to put this over the heat and very slowly, and I'll show myself doing that, of course, uh, very slowly raise the temperature of the milk and chocolate until it combines as well as it can. Now, it'll look like it's not combining completely, but what's staying floating in there is actually the spices that make this Mexican hot chocolate. Now, just to point out, this: the spices in this are not spicy like cayenne spicy. I do have hot chocolate that has cayenne added. Uh, I'm not sure what the spices on there, so I can look it up, and if I find out, I will put it in the bottom uh, below. But I believe it's things like cinnamon, cardamom, uh, maybe nutmeg or allspice. Just a nice combination of spices that give this a wonderful flavor. If you want to add a little heat to it, you, by all means, you could add a little chili or a little cayenne to it. And that's a wonderful flavor to add to hot chocolate. But I'm just going with what is already in that block. All right, let me get this on the stove. We'll get it heated up. And at the same time, I've got to get my coffee ready. Okay, the wind is picked up out here and uh, I'm probably making it a little harder on myself than I needed to, but I'm just trying to get a good cup of coffee going here. So, and hopefully you can hear me over the wind. You can see I have my chocolate milk mixture over top of my stove. And today the stove is the Bushcraft Essential LF in titanium. Loving this little stove. Still testing. We'll bring a review on it soon. You see how my VAR is working to stir and add a little frothing to it. At least that's what I'm hoping it will do. It hasn't, you know, it doesn't froth a whole lot with skim milk and I'm not like if I was using cream. But keeping it moving like this will ensure the milk doesn't burn and that uh, Kind of hard to see in the steam. Yeah, don't want anything to burn in there or stick to the bottom, so that's why I'm just continuing to turn it. Now, right beside it, you can see I've got my mocha pot sitting on top of an alcohol stove, and the alcohol stove is one of my homemade fancy feast stoves. I love these for cold weather, better than the Trangia. I mean, the Trangia is great. If you can get it warm enough and get it going, it'll, it'll uh, work, but this was just a, a nice, easy thing to do. So I have... A separate video on using the mocha pot for making coffee and I'll I'll put that one up in the corner here as well but it won't take very long for that alcohol stove to create the four to six ounces well it's actually it's only about four ounces of coffee in the mocha pot I'll be able to combine the two and then I'll be able to enjoy a Mexican mocha latte bushcraft style all right, my mocha pot finished brewing. And that smells wonderful. I'm gonna add that directly to the hot chocolate. And it's already hot enough, so I don't have to worry about that, but I have to reposition the camera. So I'm gonna take this off of the heat, leave the cover on it. Actually, I don't think I need to. The fire's pretty much burnt down. Nicely mixed together. I wonder if I can get a little froth on it. Hard with skim milk to get it to really froth up, but looks good, smells good. All right, let me reposition the camera and we'll do a taste test. Okay, Mexican mocha latte. I have just, all right, actually I've guessed it out pretty good. This is my 10 inch or 10 ounce Kapilka mug. So I have just about filled it up. So I, I guess I did four to six ounces of, uh, well, six to eight ounces of hot chocolate, four to six ounces of coffee. In this case, six and four, 10. Yeah, <laughs> all right. I'm not the best at math, but oh, it does smell good. little bit of the forest in here. I guess that also adds to making it a bushcraft uh, 
thing. Oh, that's just heaven. That is just heaven. So I've made this at home. This is the first time I made it in the woods. It won't be the last time. It was more work than just adding a package of hot cocoa and instant coffee together, but the results are absolutely worth it. Yes, more work using quality ingredients, the Abuelita hot chocolate, Mexican hot chocolate, and the Rampage coffee. Yeah, now that's heaven. That's surprising how well those var to var, however it's correctly pronounced, please somebody do it for me or show me what the correct pronunciation is, uh, how well those things work. Uh, I've seen people make whisks out of the top of a, and you could do it, I did it with a fir tree, balsam fir, but uh, you can do it with spruce, you can do it with pine. Uh, usually they have four branches off of the central stalk. Sometimes they have five. If you're lucky, you can find five. Let me know if you're interested in having me show you how I make those. Uh, it's a very simple process. I've seen people make full whisks, and maybe I'll do a video on exactly that. If you're interested, let me know how to make a whisk or a var for use like this. That's hard to describe all the, the flavors that are going on here besides the coffee and the Mexican hot chocolate. And on a cold day, it really does hit the spot. Okay, I'm going to sit back and enjoy the rest of this. As you can see, the sun is uh, getting low in the sky. It's late afternoon. won't be long before I do have to pack up if I want to be out before dark. And of course I do. Well, that's good. Okay, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.